Hello, so I wanted to do a video on different frequencies of lasers, so what you'd call a laser pen or a laser flashlight, and the sort of interesting bits of trivia with different frequencies of lasers. So we're starting with a red laser, which is the highest nanometer, sort of lowest energy, highest nanometer on the um, sort of light spectrum. So that's 650 nanometer red. Um, on the far right, we've got a 405 nanometer blue. So this is a green one, but it doesn't have a sticker on. I think green is normally about 550 nanometer. Then we've got a uh, 450 nanometer and a 405 nanometer. So basically, red, green, um, blue, blue, and that's kind of like purple blue because it's closer to UV. So, um, basically, if you look at the colour spectrum, visible light is always in nanometers, if you want to be really scientifically precise. You can also get 680 nanometers red, and I've also got an IR laser, but I've not got charged batteries in it at the moment, and you wouldn't see it on this camera anyway, I've shown it before in other videos. So, obviously, with laser pens, you have two sort of factors with it, output power, as in watts, so that's sort of like, this is a 2 watt laser, this one is a 1 watt green, and these, I don't know what the power's really meant to be on these, because they weren't advertised with a power value, but I'd assume they're at least 100 milliwatts, because um, they, they seem bright enough to be 100 milliwatts, but as I've got no way of scientifically, you know, measuring them, because those laser sort of power checker things are very expensive. Like the one Styro Pyro has, um, I think there's several grand to buy, so I can't really justify that to work out what the power of lasers are you buy online. But anyway, I thought, so let's first show you what all of them look like. So what I'm going to just do is uh, zoom the camera out a bit, and we'll get the whiteboard actually to begin with, because the interesting thing with the whiteboard is um, obviously it's a more neutral colour to shine them onto, although it's reflective, so that's a bit worrying. Anyway, so that's the red one. So, again, the camera doesn't always see them as the same colour as the eye. Uh, this is the green. So, as you, you can tell, the green looks really bright, and that's something I'm going to come on to in a minute. Um, here's a 2 watt blue. Very purple looking. The weird thing is, blues always look quite purple to the eye for some reason, I find. But And here's a 405 nanometer blue. Right, so, now let's go over some interesting stuff with the lasers. So, the interesting thing of these lasers is that green is the most sort of visible colour to most people on the spectrum. Probably because it's right in the middle of the visible light spectrum. But the interesting thing of green is that if you had a 1 watt green laser, say, and a 2 watt blue laser... <coughs> I can probably show you this quite easily. Let's, let me shine both of these at the same sort of spot. So, there's a green one. And here, this has got a different cap, here's the blue one. I suppose that blue one actually does look quite bright, but um, the weird thing is if you're shining these into the sky at night, the green one um, will look far brighter than actually even my most powerful blue one that's an 8 watt, and the reason for that is just the human eye can see it easier, but obviously the danger is of lasers is that if it hits you in the eye, for example, or it shows a reflective surface, um, even the not very visible colours can still damage your eye because of the fact, let's put them back in colour order, um, just because of the fact, obviously, like with lots of horrible, horrifying forms of radiation, just because you can't see or sense something doesn't mean it's there. So interesting, I was looking at quite a detailed scientific chart, and apparently green lasers are worse for like flash blindness, as in, you know, making you kind of temporarily lose your vision, like, you know, if a flash grenade went off, but blues are far worse for actually burning your retinas out, which is actually quite interesting. But, um... So, there's, there's, I'm not sure what the exact factor is, but I think something like you have to have a 10 watt red laser to look to the human eye to be the same brightness as a 1 watt green. So, assuming that these were similar in power, um, the actual red doesn't look as, um, you know, interesting or as bright as the green. Especially when, you know, shining at surfaces. Because the green definitely right, lights up rooms more easily. You know, if you shine it on a wall in a dark room, the room looks more green than it does with the red one. Anyway, um, so the interesting thing, though, um, that, you know, I've, I've mentioned this before, and some of you have seen some videos, is how lasers interact with glow-in-the-dark materials. 
or different colours react with galona dark materials, I should say. So each of these lasers is powerful enough that you can burn your skin with them. Um, if you know you concentrate them enough, obviously the two watt blue is going to burn your skin the most easily, just because it's quite well focused. But here's something very interesting. So let me shine these lasers on. So the red can shine on there, doesn't do anything. The green can shine on there, despite looking the brightest to my eye, not do anything. The 2 watt um, blue, as you can see, excites the um, paper. The 405 nanometer, relative to the power of the actual laser itself, excites it the most. The reason is shorter wavelengths um, excite um, phosphors more easily. So the same reason like X-rays would also make that glow, um, and gamma rays would. So that's just something I find really interesting, that the brightness of a laser to the eye doesn't actually affect how well it makes glow-in-the-dark surfaces glow, it's more down to the wavelength. So, for example, here's a good sort of thing I can show you. So here I have a black light, as you Americans would call it, we just call them UVA torches. So that obviously makes that glow, but that is the specific frequency to do it. So technically, this laser works more like an actual black light, just as a laser. Um, and that does. The interesting thing with these is the bit that makes the stuff glow in the dark is actually the um, not visible bit you can't see, the bits that's like the UV bit of the spectrum. With these you get a bit of the light leaking into the blue sort of purple spectrum, that's the bit you see with your human eye. Um, but as you can see that's excited that because it's made it glow, but because the laser is more concentrated, and that actually glows brighter with the laser. Oh, that was something quite interesting. I'll do an actual review on this flashlight at some point because it's fairly good. I bought it on Amazon because I wanted an actual decent bright UV flashlight and this is the best one I've found so far because a lot of UV flashlights are actually relatively weak. But anyway, back to the subject of the video. So yeah, that's just something you I thought you all might find interesting is that... Um, you know, lasers, depending on the colour of the laser, there's a lot more to it than just, you know, the output power. So, if you're if you're wanting to shine a laser into the sky for it to look really pretty, a green laser is always the best one to go for, because you can actually get a relatively low power laser, which means it doesn't drain the batteries as fast, and it's less dangerous. I wouldn't say not dangerous, it's less dangerous if it hits somebody in the eye. Obviously, you should use safety glasses when working with lasers, and you should get good safety glasses, not cheap crap ones. I talked about that before in videos but um so yeah green lasers are the best for actually um you know shining if you want them to be really visible assuming that you're not colorblind to a certain sort of color frequency or whatever um reds are relatively you know okay at everything reds like the classic laser um and blue is probably the most interesting in either 405 or 450 nanometer when it comes to exciting um you know uv surfaces um, just because of how it does that. Um, so 405 nanometer, by the way, is what they use in Blu-ray players. Um, that's the actual frequency. So a lot of these are um, just Blu-ray diodes that they use in these. Um, so that would be what reads or writes a Blu-ray disc. Um, if I remember right, it was 680 nanometers for CDs. So that's near infrared, um, sort of high end of the red spectrum, like very, what 405 nanometer is in the blue spectrum. Um, 680 nanometer is basically the top end of the red spectrum before you get to infrared. So the old uh, old CD players used um, 680 nanometer red lasers. Then the green lasers we used, I believe, in DVD players. So that's what 550 nanometer. I believe that's true. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong. And then yeah, Blu-ray players use 405 nanometers. So weirdly, um, although I said the red one is this is. Um, a 650 not a 680 nanometer but yeah the weird thing is this is what would read a cd back in the day this is what would read a dvd this is what would read a um blu-ray so just just quite interesting i thought that the different colors of lasers are um you know used in different applications but obviously a blu-ray player can also read cds and dvds so um I guess this type of laser is actually just better in every way, maybe, but, you know, but anyway, I just find that quite interesting that um, it's not always been the same nanometers of lasers used in um, CD players and, you know, any sort of digital disc player. Um, I wonder what laser disc used, probably, assume red, but uh, anyway, but that, that's just a bit of trivia for you. 
So, um, when it comes to visibility, green lasers always look the brightest. Um, and yeah, when it comes to making stuff glow, you want a blue laser. And red lasers are just, you know, cool, but they don't excel at anything. You can get other wavelengths of lasers, but they're very expensive normally, like the orange sort of yellow wavelength lasers. They do exist, but they cost a lot of money. Um, I think Styropyro has done some videos on those. Anyway, what was I also going to say? Oh yeah, if you want to find a way to get relatively cheap but alright lasers like these, what you want to do, um, this is a different type of laser, I've just got that because I've not got a blue in this sort of type. If you search on eBay for Laser 303 or Laser 301, you get these type of laser builds and it's you can just search for that type of laser and the nanometer you want. And then, obviously, that will affect the colour. And all of these seem to be built quite well, as in they take a single 18650, they've got a safety key feature, which, you know, you can just tie the keys to the back of them. And, um... Yeah, you just basically pick the nanometer you want, and they all seem to at least be 100 milliwatts, which is quite good. Um, and they don't cost an arm and leg either. I think they're normally about 15 to 30 pounds, depending on whoever you buy them from. There are some other alright cheap lasers I've bought off eBay. Um, it seems like it's hard to get the really crap cheap lasers now, like you used to always get in a day, you know, the ones that look literally like pens, like biros, and they would burn out really quickly because they have no heat sinks in them. Um, but yeah, the in, in regards to um, lasers, and if you want to see them all on at once, I won't. I won't show the um, 450 with here, but I've got them in the wrong order. Hang on a second. Let's just get them all there, and there we go. Light show. Look. Although I think they're not quite hitting the same place, but yeah, there you go rainbow but yeah so basically um yeah if, if you're looking for a decent priced laser if you search laser 301 and laser 303 although in theory you might get different um laser diodes in each one um you know in terms of output power the the at least the case and heatsink are fairly good on these for like the relatively cheap lasers anyway hopefully you found that interesting because lasers are interesting